Hello everyone. Uh, this is my part two, um, Clockwork Empires Revision 35 playthrough. My name is Alfred. Uh, hopefully you know that already if, uh, if you're watching part two of this series. Uh, if not, it is very nice to make your acquaintance. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Clockwork Empires. Um, we're just continuing on from where we left off last time. So the fledgling colony started off. Um, I thought I had a lot of food, but it got eaten really quickly. And so I hadn't set up food production. Like you can see, I've only just set up uh, farmland here. So we're all pretty short of... Um, so food's a bit of a problem for us. I've marked a bunch of fungus up here for harvest. Hopefully that'll tide us over. And then maybe the next couple of supply drops, I will also pick food. Uh, because I was overconfident in my food stores, uh, I actually picked building materials as my first drop. So you can see I have, a, I have a lot of building materials and no food. So the church, or I should say the chapel, is constructed. I suppose I should get a, ch a vicar in there. This is Iron Pendle. You're going to be my new vicar. Here we go, Phoebe Iron Pendle. The Right Reverend Phoebe Iron Pendle. Oh. Gonna check out her new digs. Um, so what would a sensible... Oh, here's the poet, wandering back in from the swamp. Let's see what memories he has. Corpses of fish people. He ate a raw fish person's steak. What's he been doing out there? He's one to keep an eye on. Robert Iron Robin. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, what will the sensible uh, colonial administrator build next? Well, we've got a chapel that sees to the spiritual needs of our colonists. We've got a carpentry workshop which produces planks, mainly. Uh, we've got a building for beds, although I can't put any more beds in there because I have no more cloth. Actually, I do have cloth. I can build one more bed in there. Uh, and I've got a kitchen to turn raw food into cooked food. Uh, just something I've mentioned previously. Um, when you're wondering how many beds to build your colonists, uh, clearly they don't all sleep at once. And multiple colonists can, you know, like a, a smaller number of beds than there are colonists can are generally enough to accommodate your whole, the sleep needs of your entire colony. But it's hard to gauge just how many beds that is. Um, so I use a dwarf fortress rule of thumb, which is... Uh, Build some beds, and then see uh, how much use, or how much they're used. If they're constantly used all the time, then you need more beds. Uh, I've got two prestige. I've just called in a favor from the Empire. I don't need any more uh, artisans, I think. I've got a ton of work crews that are severely understaffed. What I do need are three more workers. So I've taken that option. Supply drop. Oh, going. Oh my God! I need food. Pair crate full of food. Ten food items. Some are sausages. Some are booze. All good. Let's make sure the new um, the new arrivals have all been assigned. Oh. Well, uh, one of the new arrivals was yet another overseer. So. <laughs> The overseer work crew imbalance continues. Now then, uh, let's actually ramp up the food production. I'm a little concerned about starvation. Huh, a little bit of graphic glitch there. Farmland is just below the uh, ground level. So I'm growing wheat in that little one little farm plot to the left. Or maize, I guess. Actually, I'm going to grow some more maize in this one. And I'm going to queue up this plot for flax. So what happens is after each maize plant is harvested, and someone comes to replant the field, it gets planted as a flax plant. Because I only need a little more flax so I can make a little bit more cloth, so I can make a few more beds. 
And in the meantime, my main food production will be in this big plot here, making maize. <coughs> Which is the origin of, uh, in the real world, maize is the origin of corn. And uh, this man is being chased to death by a fishman. Let's see if I can't rally our soldiers to rescue him. Oh, there they are. Springing to the rescue. Well, maybe. Maybe not. Oh, this is going to be a long, long chase. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. That's a lot of fish, man. One, two, three, four, five. I think our soldier is going to meet a grisly end. Oh, maybe not. Yep. No, I was right the first time. Oh dear, uh, we've lost an overseer. And a soldier. Uh, time to reassign the, reassign the work crews. First of all, our military strength is down. And I have too many overseers, so I'm going to turn this guy into a militia NCO. And our two displaced workers will become soldiers. Hopefully that'll tide us over. See, we're having a bit of a fishman problem. That's characteristic of the jungle biome, actually. There are lots of fishmen everywhere. I knew this going in. Um, I thought, because I've played a, a bunch of my previous videos have all been in the temperate biome, which is, um, there are far fewer fishmen. And it tends to be easier going. I thought it, people might be finding that a bit dull. Like just tranquil life on the prairie. Uh, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by marauding fishmen, um, a considerate colonial overseer would next build, oh, let's say, what have we got? We've got food and shelter, I think. I could start... You know, I don't need to make bricks... ...yet. But I think my colonists would be very interested in having booze. So the next thing I'm going to build is the... ...boozatorium. That's not its proper name, by the way. The brewery. I don't think I have the resources to build an actual still, which is what you need to ter uh, make the more advanced alcohol. But for chicha, uh, all you need is brewing vats and obviously a door. So we'll do that for now. And. Uh, we'll have a way to use our corn. Now, there are no recipes that use corn, so the corn that doesn't get used in brewing chicha will, um, <clears throat> will get made into stew. For our brewery to make rum, it's going to need... Mm, it's going to need sugarcane, which is a crop. If we want rum, we're going to have to grow sugarcane. We're going to process it into sugar loaf, I believe, or molasses here in the kitchen. It's a bit more involved. Um, and it's probably a little bit too ambitious for now. Let's just make sure I have enough planks. I probably don't have enough planks, actually. Chop down some trees.
I do wonder why all the food is going in one food stockpile and not the other. So here we can see um, the replanted plants are flax, and the old ones are maize, uh, which we which has been collected into bushels of maize. I also don't have enough stone to finish that last oven. There's gotta be stone around here somewhere, right? This whitish rock here up here is chalk, by the way, not stone. Or rhyolite. Oh, here we go. And once the brewery is complete, we can consider building other stuff. Oh, more fishmen have wandered into town. Never fear, the brave soldiers of the Empire will dispatch him with ease. I see there are some quirks with the pathfinding as the militia men just walk through a wall. New immigrants. Again, I need workers and not more overseers. Let's hope we're lucky. Get one more prestige. I got an NCO and two workers. Well, fair enough, I guess. I guess I can turn him back into a civilian. Uh, I still need more soldiers, though. You get a soldier, and you get a worker. There's a weird glitch here. See this guy's portrait? Um. The devs were finally able to track down the cause. What's this guy doing? And what happens, uh, it occurs when somebody opens the workroom menu and all these portraits of people refresh, and one of those people is carrying a corpse in his arms. Then the renderer um, freaks out and doesn't know what to render, so the thing he's holding turns into this like iridescent blue blob. So if you're wondering why that is, um, well, that's why it is. These little things that look like donuts are actually dodo nests. Or I guess it's a bird nest since, uh, since a jungle fowl was living in it. In the temperate biome, it would be a dodo nest. Let's actually harvest some more of this, uh, some more of this fungus here. I've got some corpses that need burying. Although I'm a little concerned about setting up the graveyard because my columns will go retrieve the corpses for burial. And my last two corpses died in the middle of five fishmen. Interesting thing to note, um, so in the jungle biome, these broadleaf trees, the ones with black trunks, are the only ones you can harvest for timber. You can, however, get timber from these uh, things, the giant horsetail, which is a plant. I don't even know if that's a plant that exists now in real life. It's like one of those prehistoric grass-like plants. Uh, it's not even, it's not properly a tree. Anyway, you can, you can get timber out of those as well. It looks like every single bed I've built is occupied, which says to me, I need to build more beds. Um, beds require planks and cloth. I have no more cloth. To make cloth, I have to plant and harvest flax, and then I need a textile workshop to turn that flax into bolts of cloth. Um, so maybe that's the next thing I'll do. Oh, this poet is not having a good day. Leave well, it could be worse, I guess, because he's got a lot of memories of uh, dead fishmen. This jerk looks like he was uh, destroying my maize crop. It is kind of gross eating fishmen, um, but... Uh, <laughs> The food situation is not as stable as I would like. So, we've survived for another little bit. 
Nothing terribly exciting has happened. Now we've got a com. I thought I saw. Oh, there we go. So this colonist has the bury corpse job or burial duties job, right? So uh, when someone in your colony dies, the burial duties job will pop up spontaneously in this job list. And someone who is free, so someone who's not working in a workshop or whatever, will take it up. And so what this lady has done is she's performing the burial job. She goes to pick up the corpse and she's going to lug it back to the graveyard and bury it. Which is, you know, the sensible thing to do. Um, this can be problematic if corpses die in dangerous circumstances. Ah, more incoming fishmen. Oh my goodness, what's going on here? Well, nothing my soldiers can't handle. So we've got the brewery going. The brewery is mostly done. I'm a little concerned we're out of planks, but nobody's making planks. Well, I can call in a favor. Uh, don't need any more artisans. I could use more laborers. I could use more building materials. Don't need. I don't feel like I need an explorer quite yet. I'm going to say building materials. Um, okay, I don't know where they applied. Arrived. Uh, I do, however, have a supply drop. I think I'm okay for food, although I was overconfident about that before. I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to take food. Now, I have... Or prior to requesting the um, the favor from the empire, I had four or more prestige. Um, so the so the colonial bureaucrats look at that and say, we can give you a little bit more stuff. So if you look in the bottom right, I got 15 food items instead of 10 food items. As I was saying, the uh, essential parts of the brewery are complete. I've got a couple brewing vats. I can brew chicha. So I'd always like to maintain seven in the stockpile. If I get a still up and running, I can distill the rum, sugar into rum, or I can distill chicha into moonshine. Uh, but I think my colonists will be happy enough with beer for now, or the equivalent of beer. So the colony continues apace. Huh. Nobody slaughtered this jungle fowl. It's kind of weird. Here's a preacher preaching to an empty chapel. Right, um, so we've got beer production going. We've got a steady, I think a steady stream of beer. Kitchen, um, I think our next priority must be more beds. People are going to start getting grumpy when, they, uh, when they've had to sleep on the floors too often. I mean, we do have flax production, so the only other thing we need is a textile workshop. So let's get started on that. Let's put it over here. So the one vital component of any textile workshop is the spinning jenny. This doesn't really matter where I put it, although, um, there we go. 
I don't have enough brass cogs to make more than one. Um, so unfortunately, I'll just make one for now. I would like to make more, eventually, when I have the resources. Oh, this poet is not having a not having a good month. So as we can see, the standing order for our pickled orange cup fungus is still producing uh, these crates instead of stew. Although we do have stew, uh, I assume either the coconuts or maybe one of the bushels of maize got turned into stew here. Or maybe even one of these raw fish person steaks. I think the important thing that we're supposed to be... I'm just going to prioritize fish person steak over raw stew as well. I think the thing we should be <clears throat> prioritizing with the kitchen is a variety of food in that uh, colonists will enjoy different types of cooked food. And the implication from the devs was that being stuck with uh, little variety, so even if it's good food, even if it's just all the same all the time, um, it will not be as satisfying as a, like a varied, a, a varied menu. Uh, so I'm hoping to keep my colonists a little bit happier that way. Uh, but I think that's enough for this session. Um, you know, fairly uneventful. Your usual colony starting stuff. Um, I guess I'll cut it off here. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be continuing this. Uh, eventually I will get to the new bamboo and mine uh, farms and workshops, respectively. And I'm hoping to um, get enough naturalists to... naturalists, scientists, lab assistants, and the laboratory workshop so that I can research the... well, discover and research the mysterious artifacts, which is something uh, that hasn't been explored much yet either. Uh, but that'll be in the future. Thanks very much for watching this one. Uh, my name is Alfred. This is Clockwork Empire's Revision 35. It was published just a couple of days ago. Great. Have a good one.